move to get over here. Close to five, no? Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I want to talk about a bait today that honestly, when it first came out a year, maybe two years ago, I didn't look at it and think it was all that special. Now, in reality, I got to use it at Lake Okeechobee for the first time, and I've got a much different opinion on it. So I want to talk about it a little bit. It is the uh, Strike King Hybrid Hunter right here. Uh, and it's a very unique crankbait and it's something like I said until I've actually used it I had a different opinion on it. So before I break down that's uh, this bait specifically I want to remind you guys of a couple of things first I'm doing virtual lessons So if you have questions that you want to ask me directly, maybe have me help break down your local lake check out the virtual lessons the link is in the uh, video description also if you want to support the channel and you're looking to purchase tackle, please use my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link. Uh, every little bit that I make from that comes right back to the channel and producing content. So if you see something on here that you're interested in, like maybe the Strike King Hybrid Hunter, please use the link that I put in, in my video description. All right, so let me just break down the backstory on this. You know, this bait uh, has been out for probably a year, maybe a little over that at this point. And it's meant to come through grass without you know, snagging up. It's almost meant to be a uh, something you would choose to use rather than maybe a vibrating jig because it's meant to come through the grass, rip through, and create some reaction strikes. Now, when I first saw it, I kind of thought to myself, well, this is like an updated version of the old Spence Scout, if you're familiar with that. And for whatever reason, it's it just is a bait that to me is not eye appealing. I don't enjoy the fin on the back. I look at it, the shape isn't something I would normally use. It's a big bulbous bait. It's a big crankbait, to be honest with you. And I purchased a couple because I know a lot of people have been using them in Florida. I've had them in my boat since last year's Harris Chain event. And I just happened to have them in the boat for uh, Lake Okeechobee. Now, I did not expect to go to Lake Okeechobee to throw crankbaits, but because of the hurricane and the fact they've been spraying the lake off, there's very little submerged weed in the lake, which ideally would mean, well, why would you pick this up? Well, I caught a lot of my fish going down the hard lines and I needed a crankbait that would not dive too deep. I was catching them in two to three feet of water. And if your crankbait got to the bottom, it would get balled up in black decaying matter. So I needed a bait that would dive really only about a foot, just deep enough to get under the penny wart and hyacinth mat so the fish could see them. And that's what this bait does. This is the shallow running one. It, it says it dives a foot, one to three feet. I was getting like a foot, maybe a foot and a half out of it, which in some circumstances would not be deep enough. But in this case, it was the perfect running depth. Uh, and it was just one of those baits that it really, it, it generated a lot of strikes for me. Uh, the reason I tried the crankbait is because my roommate, Chris Crow, was throwing a uh, much larger swim bait that had a real wide wobbling movement to it. And, you know, when he told me that, I was like, I wonder what crankbaits I have that would run the right depth and at the same time give me the right motion. And I just happened to pick up the Hybrid Hunter. I saw it sitting there, new in the case, and I'm like, you know what? If I'm ever going to try it, this is the time to do it. And as soon as I put it on, the wobbling motion on this matched the wobbling motion of Chris's swim bait. 
And I thought, well, this is a good one. You know, this is this is what I'm looking for. And I went out and at the end of the last day of practice for a couple hours and I generated several bites on this bait. And I gotta tell you, almost every bite I had, the entire bait was engulfed in the fish's mouth, which means you've got the right bait. They were eating it, they were attacking it. I mean, it, they were ripping the rod out of my hand. So from a, a you know, a bait review standpoint, I guess I just want to, you know, go back and address my original thoughts on it where this is a crankbait that's not going to come through grass real clean. I don't, I still don't think it's a real visually appealing bait, but the motion on it is undeniably fantastic. Not only does it have extremely wide wobbling, it's got really good side to side roll. So you get, you get a bait that's wobbling and rolling at the same time. And it's, it's unique. That's all I'm going to say with that. You know, if you're looking for something that's going to create reaction strikes, this is a good one to do it because not only is it wobbling and rolling at the same time, it's got a very erratic movement. So even on a straight retrieve or when you stop it or create action in it, the bait wants the dart all over the place. So, you know, it's almost like it doesn't just run straight in. You could be retrieving it and it kind of does this on the way back. So it's got Good hunting action, especially for a shallow running bait, that's unique to a bait like this. So the wobbling motion is definitely one of the things that I think is a uh, attribute to the bait. The next has, has to do with the diving depth. Now they do make, I believe, a deeper diving one, but this is truly a shallow running crankbait. <clears throat> you know, when you think of other shallow running crankbaits like uh, the old shallow fat wrap or maybe a man's baby one minus one, they all kind of have that wide wobbling motion, but this is one, you know, that I don't feel like the, the motion on those changed much based on the speed of the retrieve. If you change the speed of the retrieve on this, you will really go from a slow tantalizing wobble to just crazy hunting motion all over the place. So it, it has a unique feature to that. So something that I definitely think is worth pointing out, and it truly is not a deep diving bait. You get a foot, maybe a little bit more out of it. Now I was throwing it on 15 pound fluorocarbon. So that may have prevented some of the diving depth, but I really don't know that I could get three feet out of this consistently unless I was making really long casts. And that's something to point out too. I was making short precision casts. I was not really making as long as I could as far as I could throw this, I was making casts of maybe 50 feet. So on a long cast, you probably could get it a little deeper. Uh, but the, the main quality of this bait and the main thing it was hyped over was the fact that it would come through grass really clean. Now, again, I wasn't fishing submerged grass, but I was fishing a lot of pennywort and I was fishing a lot of, um, I'm not even sure what it is. It's kind of a root type material. It's almost like a uh, gator grass that was growing. You know, and then I had some some hay grass, some Kissimmee grass mixed in, and some pad stems as well. And I got to tell you, this is where this bait shined for me. It came through that stuff extremely well. Like I would literally throw it into the gnarliest of stuff, and it would walk its way right through the cover. Now I did get snagged in a lot of cases. It wasn't like you know it was it was completely coming through every cast. But when you looked at the stuff that I was fishing in. It was really impressive that I wasn't getting stuck 10 times per cast. You know, I may get stuck every 10th cast, but I was getting it through clean on nine casts, which was fine for what I was doing. The other thing I was looking for was a lot of isolated uh, little bushes or isolated, they're like little woody stick ups. And this thing really deflected off that cover extremely well and generated the strikes that way too. So I'm very impressed with how weedless it actually is. And that's one of the things that it's, it's talked about, but you know, for me to be talking about this bait, you know, in a, this manner, I think says enough in itself, but, uh, I was truly impressed with it. Now it does come in a couple of sizes. This is the full size. I was also throwing the junior size. It seemed like I just had to figure out what they wanted on the day. One day I caught more on the small size, and the last day I caught more on the full size, but there are a couple of different sizes. I do want to point out a couple of things that I didn't like about the bait. The first was it does not cast as well as I'd like. It really wanted to, to float to one side or the other. And I think that's just based on the big profile of the bait. But when I was trying to precision cast and we had windy conditions 
in all three days. It really seemed like there were times it would be going where I wanted to, and all of a sudden it would take a hard left or a hard right, which was frustrating at times because if it made, you know, if it went too far to one direction, it was too far from the cover. And if it went the other way, it was three feet into the cover. So uh, it did seem to flutter on the cast. So from that standpoint, it was a little frustrating, but I was willing to deal with it because they were eating it so good. The other is uh, the hook consistency on them wasn't that great either. I found that some of the hooks had like a dull point on it. So I ended up replacing all of the hooks over to uh, Berkeley Fusion 19 treble hooks, which I, I think are fantastic. Uh, but it was like one bait I would grab would have really sharp trebles. Another one I'd grab would have one sharp treble and, you know, two points on another treble were not up to what I was looking for. Uh, the other thing I'd be curious to know from those that are using it, do you guys find that the lips are not that strong? Now, I realize it was beating the baits up, but I did have two lips break on me and they were both on the junior size. Uh, so I'd be curious to know if that's something that other anglers are seeing. I'm not necessarily going to blame that on the manufacturing process just because of how abusive I was being to the baits based on the cover that I was fishing. It just was not, it, I was really beating the baits up. Uh, and at the same time, you know, I was catching a lot of fish on them. I did have one alligator grab one at one point, so maybe that weakened it. Um, but it's just one of those things. That I'd be curious to hear from you guys if there's issues with that. But overall, this was a bait I was hesitant to use just because I, I didn't think it would function as good as it does. In hindsight, I'm disappointed I haven't been using it sooner. So I really got to give this a high score. You know, it's still not a visually appealing bait to me, but I can get over that because the fish found it very appealing at Lake Okeechobee. So I will be purchasing more of these. The one I was using was the gold black back in both sizes. Uh, but man, it's... Uh, it's a bait that I will be using more of in the future, and I would highly recommend that you guys might want to check them out too, especially if you're fishing lakes with a lot of vegetation or really shallow cover where you need to get a bait to come through that stuff clean. I would check out that Strike King Hybrid Hunter. So leave in the comment section, what do you guys think? If you've used it, do you think it's a great bait? Do you think it's a bait that uh, isn't that good? And I just ran into the right circumstances. So let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, guys, Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We'll have a new video coming out tomorrow for you.